It's my pleasure and honor to introduce our guest speaker today, Susan Wilson Sullivan, a class of 1980. <coughs> Susan is a small business expert, award winning entrepreneur and journalist, and best selling author, media personality, attorney, and CEO of Susan Sullivan Media. She is also an owner slash co founder of SB. TV.com, small business television. <laughs> As the CEO of SBTV, Susan's vision and leadership helped grow the company from a concept to a multi million dollar enterprise. Her successful entrepreneur experience and legal background provides her with a unique vantage point from which to share information and insight with business owners around the world. Susan is a sought after keynote speaker and media personality. She is a small business contributor for ABC News Now, as well as a regular guest expert on Fox 2 News. She is the host and producer of It's Your Biz with Susan Sullivan, a weekly half-hour television program which airs on Fox. Additionally, Susan appears on ABC America This Morning, MSNBC, Fox Business News, Good Day New York, WABC, WCBS, and many other stations across the country. Susan has written three best-selling books, The Girl's Guide to Power and Success, Reinvent Your Career, Attain the Success You Desire and Deserve, and The Girl's Guide to Building a Million Dollar Business. Her next book, From Employee to Entrepreneur, Making a Smart, Successful Transition, is scheduled to be released in 2011. Previously, Susan has served on the National Women's Business Council, which counsels the President, pause, <laughs> Congress, and the SBA on issues impacting women business owners. She is also a past member of the Women's Leadership Board at Harvard University. In 2002, Susan received the Professional Achievement Award for her alma mater, Columbia College. I'd like to introduce Susan Wilson Sullivan. Thank you, everyone, and I think I hope you all can hear me. I have a pretty loud voice, so it is great to be here. It's fun to be back on campus. I was just saying I, I went to the restroom down the hall here, and I saw one of my old classrooms, and that I spent a lot of hours in, and I stood there and just kind of looked in the door, and I remember sitting in those chairs and listening to the lectures, and it seems like, in many respects, it was just yesterday. I can't believe it's been all of 10 years. <laughs> anyway, it is a pleasure to be here, and um, I appreciate all of you coming out today. I know everyone has hectic schedules, particularly at this day and age. And, so I um, appreciate you being here. Just out of curiosity, I'd like to know how many of you in the room uh, are women business owners? If you just can raise your hand. And how many of you would like to be in your own business? <laughs> <laughs> okay. You can secretly say that you don't want to leave your jobs. I know. <laughs> well, actually, um, just in case you aren't aware of some of the statistics, uh, women are starting businesses at twice the rate of men in the United States today. It's the fastest growing market segment right now in the United States. The interesting thing about starting businesses for women is even though we're starting businesses at twice the rate of men, we are not growing our businesses at nearly the same rate as our male counterparts. And there are a number of reasons for that, and I'll talk about that a little bit later on. But the really scary statistic is, uh, just recently I, I happened to chair and serve as vice president of the board of directors of Women in Active Public Policy, which is, um, you know, represents 550,000 women business owners around the United States. And we commissioned a study on the economic impact of women business owners in the United States. If women business owners were their own country, we would have the fifth largest GDP in the world. Now that's pretty impressive. Now here comes the scary part. Those numbers are driven by only 20% of women-owned businesses. 
The results show that 80% of women who start businesses are continuing to maintain a level that we might call a micro-enterprise, a cottage industry, or certainly under $250,000 in annual revenue. And with those numbers in mind, there's been a previous research study that showed fewer than 3% of women-owned businesses ever gross over $1 million in annual revenue. So with those numbers in mind, and with my own experience, as you heard in my introduction, I started a company in 2004. Uh, by 2006, we were already a multi-million dollar business. And I looked at myself, and I thought about my background. And I thought, if I can do this, anybody can do this. This isn't brain surgery. Where is the disconnect? Why aren't women growing successful and sustainable businesses? And so I started doing research on that topic and then wrote the book, The Girl's Guide to Building a Million Dollar Business, to, it not, to help and inspire women to understand the fundamentals that it takes to grow a business that creates an economically sustainable enterprise. So before I go into some of the information that I, I learned from writing this book and some of the principles that I put forth in the book, I thought I'd give you a little background about myself and my entrepreneurial experience and sort of what brought me to this level where now they call me the small business expert. So I, I don't know, I kind of find it interesting in today's world, it seems like everybody's an expert on something. You know, I, and the one that I'm kind of getting off track and the one I find really fascinating are the people who consider themselves social media experts when you know it's changing every 45 minutes. How can you be an expert in something that changes that quickly? I don't know, but maybe that's because I'm 52 years old and I don't keep up that fast. Um, but I actually started my first business when I was 15 years old. I grew up in an entrepreneurial family. Uh, my mother uh, had me late in life. She was 37 when I was born. Uh, her first husband was killed in World War II. And she actually started her first business in the late 1940s. So you can imagine what an interesting person she was, a woman business owner in the late 1940s. Uh, she subsequently uh, remarried. She married my father. And uh, they moved to the town that I grew up in, which was Fredericktown, Missouri. And mom opened a dress store, a clothing store in this little town. And my dad was working for a funeral home. My dad is a, a mortician and a funeral director. Well, it wasn't too long before my mom's entrepreneurial spark kind of rubbed off on my dad, and they decided to open their own funeral home. So my mother was actually the business brains behind the business. And my dad was a great PR guy. My dad, I tell you what, he could just tell it. A yard, and he's a best networker. I mean, I watched him network before I even knew what the word networking meant. And so they were a great dynamic duo in running their business together. So mom continued to run both businesses until the funeral home grew to such a point that she sold the clothing business, darn. And then it, we had the funeral home. So I grew up learning how to work for the first thing. I started working in the business when I was five years old. So it's one thing I know how to do very well. In fact, Dr. Smith asked my husband, um, what does she like to do for fun? The first thing out of his mouth was work. <laughs> uh, so it is something that I know how to do very well. But I do credit my mother for that and her entrepreneurial spirit. Because uh, she taught me, even back in those days, and in this little town that I grew up in, which um, at the time I was growing up there had the highest illiteracy rate of any county in the state of Missouri. Um, she taught me that you can do anything you want to do as long as you're willing to make the sacrifices to work hard enough to achieve it. And it doesn't mean that you have to be the best. You just have to be willing to work the hardest. And it was an important lesson to learn. So here I was, growing up, working in the funeral home, going to school, taking piano lessons, taking ballet lessons, and I hit 15 years old. And it just wasn't cool to be the funeral director's daughter at 15. <laughs> So I decided that if I was going to work, I wanted to work somewhere other than the funeral. So I got a job waiting tables at the only nice restaurant in town, which was the Longhorn Steakhouse. 